Hi there, I'm Mary Susie from Be To Me A Story, and today I'm gonna to show you uh, three different ways to start a captive two-in-one chain. And then uh, later on in the video, I'm gonna go through um, and show you pretty much um, how to make an entire uh, chain like this one. This is the largest version, great for beginners. And you can see that this uses um, square jump rings in it. So I just wanna show you this. This is uh, my bracelet kits. There's a few of those, different colors on the website. Um, also, this chain here is very long. It's about 40 inches. And I made it that way. I love a long chain myself, and you could double this around. But I just wanted to point out too, that if you were to put um, two hook and eyes, or two hooks really, on either end of this chain, that this could be draped in some very interesting ways because the, um, the hook can actually fit through the chain. So you could link it from both sides and actually have like an asymmetrical layered effect, okay? Um, I wanna show you this one here. This is just a plain silver chain made in this. You can see how nice and symmetrical this is. Um, it's a nice size, pairs really well with gemstones. And you could um, show off a lot of types of gemstones. It doesn't have to be a centerpiece. You could have them throughout. And uh, this is just a beautiful chain and I'll show you one. Um, I have a video now in kits that are beaded, okay? And I just wanted to show you this beaded chain. This is actually a gift I made for my mother, but I wanted to show you how I s created the segments and added uh, focal beads throughout it. And I will just show you that these are the beaded kits that I'm releasing. And, this is ju done just a little bit differently, so I wanted to give it its own separate video to go with the kits, and uh, that video will come with the kits. But uh, this one's for free, and um, if you like uh, what you're seeing here and you enjoy my videos, I hope that you'll like and follow me on YouTube. And uh, remember, all this, um, all the supplies and all these kits are available at beadmeastory.com. So you can go there at any time and uh, try a new project. Um, part of the reason why I wanted to do this project now was I did see some other videos coming out. And uh, I think that uh, the way that I'm gonna show you is probably the easiest way to do this. So uh, I wanted to make sure to have it out there so that you could learn the easiest and the best way. This is one of my favorite chains. And um, I wanted to make sure that you could incorporate it into your chain mail as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I want to teach you two ways to start a captive two-in-one chain. And um, there's an additional video that's going to show you actually a third way to do this. But let me go ahead and get started with this. These are smaller jump rings and these are two end rings. Um, this is kind of the way I teach this in the beaded version of a captive two-in-one chain. Oops. I close that without putting it on my paper clip, but that's okay. That's why we use paper clips. Can slide right on. Okay, so you can see here, I used a much smaller ring to attach my first two by two rings of the chain. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that again. I wanna do it twice. You're always gonna have two on the end. Um, you can either use a, a two hole clasp with a captive two-in-one chain, or you can uh, bring it down to a single and use like a lobster clasp or something like that. But either way, it's nice to have uh, two of the smaller jump rings at the end of the chain. It just gives it extra strength. And you'll see there's a, a good reason to kind of have it there. Okay, so I've got my two larger rings. This is gonna be my two by two chain on the outside. You can see over here that I'm starting a one by one chain as well. This is a smaller size and it's gonna sit inside. Okay, so I'm gonna take this ring and put it through. This is part of the outside chain. So this is just one of the next two rings. Okay, so everything's gonna be a two by two. But once we have the three rings here, we can go ahead and I'm gonna have my ring ready to add the second ring. But before I do that, what I wanna do, I think I'm gonna use the teal because it's darker. I'm using teal and sky blue here. 
what we're going to do is try and put this slide this in between and I actually if I can I want to get this to tuck in between those two rings okay so then that way those two rings help hold it in place and sideways and the teal ring is sitting horizontally between the two vertical silver rings as you can see and once I have that one ring in place I'm going to bring in the second ring. Now you can see this is going to be above the sky blue. The other one I already put on is below it. So now I want to have one above it. And I'm going to pass that through both, both of the two by two rings, not through the single row that's in the center. And I want to be really careful when I do this, okay, to go ahead and uh, get that closed without having the center drop out on me because there's not much holding that teal one in place right now. And I want to be real careful when I bring these rings back down and around. Okay, so you can see. Now my teal kind of fell off to the side. It's not sitting between these two rings like I want it to be, but that's okay because we're either going to do one of two things. We're going to come back to the beginning. And in the case of like beaded ones, we want to go back to these first two rows and add beads. But in the case of, um, of just a plain one, you know, we can open up these two rings at the beginning again and get that set right. Really, you're only going to have to move one of these jump rings, not two. Okay, so let's go on ahead. And by adding this third row of two by two chain, I think I'm now locked in place really well where I don't need to worry about anything. And so after this row, we're going to be able to move forward in the way that we would want to normally do a captive two in one chain. Okay. So we've got that third pairing. Okay. So you can see, especially if I hold it on the side, we've got the teal, the sky blue. Now we need another teal. So we're going to let these rings kind of fold back and get out of our way that are on the sides now. Okay, so I'm going to do a teal. And now, as I said, we can just go ahead and move forward with this like we would normally want to. So I'm going to go ahead and do my teal. Then I'm going to do a sky blue. another teal. So you see I'm just growing the inside one by one chain. And now that I have my um, starting point secure, I don't really have to worry about too much else. Okay, so I can just keep this going. And then when I'm ready to, I'll fold those rings back down and I'll continue working on my two by two chain that's going to sit around it. Okay. So this is just naturally uh, going to lay right. You don't have to worry about anything else. Once you get this weave started, it's just about the easiest weed weave in the world. And it's just really a matter of getting it going in the first place. That is the challenge, but after that, as you can see, I just add to my one by one chain and then I add to my two by two chain and that's all there is to a captive two in one. Okay, so here's my next technique for starting a captive two in one chain and that is starting off of a two uh, captive two by one chain. Um, as you can see here, um, I did lots of samples while I was making my uh, beaded video and um, I have a little starting piece already done but what I want to tell you is when you buy a kit unless you're the absolute largest size and you use every ring you can always make a few extra rows at the end of your chain that you don't need to use okay and if you just keep those 
and keep them attached to a paper clip or something. Then anytime you want to start a two, uh, a captive two in one chain, you can just take out that little piece and start working on it. Okay, so now this is going to be a little bit different size than I have here, but it's not going to matter. You can see that I'm starting my one by one chain in the center. Okay, so just adding one by one by one. I'll just do a few rows. Let's do maybe like four rows of this. Okay, this, this technique makes it so easy. So if you've ever made one of these before, like I said, make yourself a little extra and then disconnect it and keep it attached to a paper clip in your drawer or something and you will have it to work off of. Okay, see, so I added my one by one chain in the center and now I can just start adding my two by two chain. That's gonna be around the outside of it. So I'm just working off of a piece. Um, this is great to have, this is a great way to work because um, you never have to worry about that uh, difficult first step again once you have a little piece that you can work from. So if you're going to make lots of uh, these captive two-in-one chains and do some different sizes, I have all different sizes from a very large size that's ideal for beginners on down to uh, this size, which probably makes, I'm, I'm guessing that this chain here that I'm working on that's just um, simply chain and not uh, a beaded chain is probably around five millimeters uh, thick. So it's a really nice micro sized chain. And you can see the piece that I just showed you how to start here. Okay, so this is another way. So you can see I'm able to just keep adding to the pieces and then when I get to the end, actually let me, let me do these couple more pieces for you. I just want to have enough so I can take this off. I mistakenly did not leave myself enough uh, of these larger jump rings out and open to do this. Okay, so once I have this going, I can remove the last pieces from this previous chain. Okay, so I'll remove this, and then this, and then this purple one that's holding it in place. And hopefully I've, I've have enough, you know, I probably wanna have like four or five rows of this part with the silver um, before I can take this starting part off. But that is by far the easiest way to do it and uh, I hope you like that technique and we'll use it. So in order to begin the captive two-in-one chain, um, you notice that we have two sizes of jump rings here. We have a larger size and a smaller size. So this larger size is going to be a two-by-two two chain that sits around the outside of this one-by-one one chain. And so I'll, I'll show you how to start putting that together. So first I wanna start with the large rings and I have uh, four closed rings, one, two, three, four, and one open ring here. Okay, so I'm gonna link those all together. One, two, three, four. Okay, so put all four of them onto the one that's open. Now I'm going to pull two this way and two this way. So you see the one that was open is now in the center and I've got two over here and two over here. And now what I'm gonna do is take these ones that are closest to me and I am going to tilt these towards me. 
Okay. So see how it makes like a little boat in there? That's exactly what you want. And then the next ring we're going to add, we're going to be um, putting it right where the open ring was. So we're going to be again joining these four rings, but we're not going to do that until we have our one by one chain going so that we can uh, go ahead and put it into the middle of it. So let me go ahead and start this. I need first closed ring. So this is a gunmetal. Sorry if my uh, fingers are a little bit stained. I've been working with alcohol inks. Okay. So, so just link the second one to the first one. Okay. And then I'm going to go to the second color. Got three colors here. You can use any combination of colors you want. A single color two colors, three colors, four colors. The more colors you get though, it gets, it becomes harder to um, discern how long uh, to make the bracelet. So once you practice this with uh, two or three colors, then you can see how many rows you're gonna need exactly. But notice that each time I add a ring to a one by one chain, that um, the first ring is horizontal, the second ring is vertical, the third ring is horizontal, and the fourth ring is vertical. Okay, so that's going to alternate back and forth. And that's part of the reason why we're doing this with uh, two gunmetal and then two purple. And now I'm going to bring in the lime green for my third color. And when I first start this, I just want a little bit of this one by one chain. Once I, once I start getting the chain established, I'll make this longer. But I just like to get this rolling with as small pieces as possible. So so six of these is enough. So now I have this one by one chain that I've created. Okay. So I'm going to lay this inside of here. So I want you to notice how this first one is on the horizontal. This one's on the vertical and this one's on the horizontal. Okay. So I've laid it into my boat. And now because these are horizontal, this, this purple ring here is gonna get squeezed between these two blue ones. And this first uh, gunmetal one here, the very first ring, this is gonna get squeezed between these two, okay? And then um, this middle one that was our open ring, that's the back side, and we're going to add this to the front side. So again, this one's going to be connecting these four rings on the outside, but we're going to squeeze this up. Okay, so if you can grab this carefully. This is the hardest part of this. Once you get this started, this is the easiest weave in the world, but getting it started. So see how I'm holding it and see how I'm, I'm letting this purple lay back down so it's horizontal. And this first gun metal needs to be needs to be sideways. Okay. So this is tricky doing this. So I'm gonna come in from this side. I know this seems like a weird angle, but this is so that it can go around in a circle easily. So I went through the first one, got through the second one, I'm above the purple. Now I go through the third one and the fourth one. Okay, so I've linked all those four rings together. And because this step is hard, let me just say that um, if you have one of my kits, there's always extras. Unless you have a very, very large size wrist, you're going to have extras. So when you make this chain, um, I would make it extra long and then take off a small portion of it because then uh, you can always use that portion so that you don't have to ever restart this bracelet again. You can just keep going with it. Okay, so now that we have, you see the, the two larger rings, these are vertical, but the single ring that's in the center of it is horizontal. And then the next row is gonna be vice versa. The two larger rings are on the horizontal, the middle rings on the vertical. Okay, so we're just gonna continue to alternate this the whole way down. So let me just show you now that we have these first few rows established. Now, all we have to do to add another row 
is we're going to add a large ring to this side, which was the side that was facing me. Now I'm going to turn that around so that's now, now on the back. And then I'm going to add another ring through these two large rings. I'm only going through the large rings. I'm not going through the smaller rings. Okay, see, so the outside of the chain, I just keep continuing the same way. So see, now I have a new pair that um, is squeezing the purple rings. Just want to close that a little bit better. Okay, so that they're squeezing the purple. And now I'm gonna add a pair that's going to squeeze around the uh, lime green. Okay, so I just add one through the last pair that I added on. And then I'm gonna flip it over so that that ring I just added is on the back side. And I'll add one more to the front side and I've added a new pair. Okay, so I still don't like how this ring is closed. So this is a fairly loose weave when you do it in this size, so you can, you can keep fiddling with your rings, making sure that they're closed perfectly. These are big rings, so people are gonna notice if they're not perfect. So you wanna keep uh, making sure that everything is smooth. Okay, so now I just want you to see how, see how the larger rings, we have a pair of rings, a pair of rings, a pair, a pair, and a pair. And then on the inside, it's just that single row of the gunmetal, gunmetal, purple, purple, lime, lime. So to continue on with the inside row, because I want it a little bit longer now, I'm almost to the end. I'm just gonna, um, and I, I wanna have as, as many rows as I can here, like five is usually good, because you'll see these rings are gonna flop back. So I need to be careful at this stage that they don't, they don't keep flopping right back off of the piece. So I might add this one and just to secure it a little bit more for myself, I'll go ahead and add this outer row. So see how I added one to this row and now this won't be at the end anymore when I add this next row. Okay, so the larger rings only pass through the outside rings and the smaller rings only pass through the inside rings. So you're just really creating a two by two chain that sits around the outside of a one by one chain. And that's all there is to the captive two in one chain. Okay, so just keep continuing on, make your, uh, make, make your inside longer, and then continue to keep making the outside longer and then when I finish this one, um, you can see how I like to put two uh, jump rings on either side of a, a single, okay? And you wanna make sure that where you start and where you finish, that this is gonna work out right, that you have vertical facing center ring at the start and the finish. So you can start and finish anywhere, depending on the length that you want, but just make sure that they're facing when you uh, lay this completely out flat and you look at the whole thing. I know I can't really show you the whole thing on my, on my camera, but when you look at the whole thing and you make sure all this is straight, you see that your first one and your last one are on a vertical, okay? And then just two, two jump rings to link um, a two hole clasp and that's all there is to this. Hope you enjoyed this and I hope you'll join me for my next video. Thanks so much.